So today we are going to talk about uh, pointers. Uh, w w one of you told me that uh, we have a missing lecture for recording. Uh, can you tell me the, the number of the lecture based on the notes that we have on the on the thing? I'm going through all my stuff and it's getting a little mismatch. I just want to make sure that I... Uh, I was just talking about the... I think it was uh, the error handling one the, for the throwing exceptions. Yes, let me just take a look at the... I looked through all the notes and I couldn't so find it. Notes. Oh, so the notes are missing? Yeah, I'm no the note. I'm looking through all the notes, but I'm looking. I didn't see which lecture had the the the, 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 okay, I'll the error handling. Okay, I looked in each individual one. I'm like trying to like. Where, I'll go. I'll go. I I think it's uh, we have. It should be uh, nine thirteen. Yes, yes, it's nine. It's uh, except it's nine thirteen. Nine October thirteen. 9 October 13. Okay, so I'll so probably ah. I'll, I'll take. I see, yes, I see. I see. I see it there because I was looking. I saw functors. So if I that's see the case, I think I found it, and I just started to upload it. I think I found it. Let me just okay. double check. There's only. No, that's not the one. No, that's not the one. No. Okay, I'll go. I'll go try and try and see if I can. <laughs> okay, so that's not the one then. I'll 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 try to find out and see what happens. Anyways. Yeah, I think it, it might be on the October thirteenth. Okay, I'll double check. All right, so let's um, uh, let's get on with what we want to talk about today. Uh, today we're going to talk about arrays and pointers, and uh, that's um, oh somebody actually. Um, is there a quiz on Friday? So, uh, quiz on Friday. Um, let's see. Uh, so, it's 11 now, and we are doing... Uh, it's uh, 11 now, we are doing arrays and pointers. And what quizzes do we have on the thing? We have up to quiz nine. Did I add quiz nine? I think I did. Oh, I'm not going to edit it now because you're going to see the, the questions. Let me bring it up. So we, uh, let me just check. Yeah, it is there. So we have quiz uh, quiz none that is week 10. Week 10. Okay. And so we have two choices. Either we can do quiz 10 on uh, uh, Friday that you're coming. That's going to be on... Uh, um, uh, that's going to be on... Arrays and pointers and preprocessor directives. Um, or we can do the quiz nine that is on. Let me bring the weekly schedule up so we can. So we have two choices. I'm going to put it on vote and what, uh, whatever the majority decides, we're going to do that. So uh, we have a quiz 11 can be done this Friday. Or we can do the quiz 10 on multi-threading on Friday and put the 11 for next week. So um, so your vote is going to be do the 11 next week or this week. So if the 11 is going to be next week, I'm going to make the 10 this week. So let's see if uh, we're going to see. So pre... Wouldn't someone, uh, what if someone already completed one of the, the quiz nine already because it's already open? I know, but if somebody, ah. if, if anyone, did, let me see if actually, you're right. Let me see if anybody did it or not. If they did it, there's it's there's no question is needed, actually. <laughs> you're right. So, 
so so far quiz nine no no one did it there is one that is yeah no one even started it yet so before I do it let, let me make it unav unavailable <laughs> and um, and then so quiz nine and then we're gonna ask okay so pre-processed directives and and pre-processed directive and pointers do this we're gonna say there you go Song and Iman. So I don't really understand it. So like, uh, it's either gonna be in person this week or in person next week, right? Yes, you're gonna have an in person here. So if it's next week, then you're gonna do quiz nine in person this week and ten next week. Otherwise, you're gonna do uh, quiz uh, ten this week. Okay, so if I choose, like, if I choose next week, what are we gonna do this week? Like, Quiz we're gonna nine. have. What? Isn't Quiz... this the? Oh. Pardon me. Oh, this is the Quiz Ten, right? This is for Quiz Ten. This is so Quiz yeah, Ten. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Right. I got it. Thanks. Okay, so, okay, so in case that other people didn't know, let me just tell you what the vote is because uh, I think people got uh, uh, confused. So let's do it like this. So I'm going to say, I'm going to rephrase the question. So quiz nine this week in person and 10 next week in person. So if you want quiz, vote for quiz nine this week in person and quiz 10 next week in person. I will say yes or no. This is better. <laughs> so I'm asking, would you like quiz nine to be this week and quiz 10 to be next week? Both in person. See that completely completely changed now. Actually, no, it's not changed that much. <laughs> Please don't do this to me. Come on. Irish, you're the tiebreaker. Come on. Irish? Irish is gone. We have no uh, Irish. I Irish. guess it's a duel to the death. For a win. <laughs> Seriously, Irish is gone. Seriously. I uh, he, he put in the chat no. I think he has it in full screen. Oh, okay. Uh, it says no. Okay. So, uh, so this week quiz nine. So, so. Look, just look at this. This is the thing 50 50. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, and and um, Iris said no. So uh, if it's no, then uh, it means uh, 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 quiz uh, uh, ten will be this week, and nine will be uh, online. Okay, perfect. Done. I think he's typing right now, though. <laughs> no, I see a no over there. Okay, so it says Iris. Iris said no. Irish is typing. Irish doesn't have a microphone. You can all go later on beat. Oh, the other 50% who said yes, <laughs> use the no said no. You can go beat him up later. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, um, sorry, just like to clarify. Um, uh, does that mean like we're going to do quiz um, seven, eight, and nine in uh, on online and 10 in person this, this coming Friday? So, going to be four in total for this week. Yeah, I, actually, I can put the quiz 10 for next week anyway. So this week, we're not going to have a quiz. Like this, you have time to do something, to, to okay, study for quiz you. 10. So quiz 10, we're going to set it uh, next week, and you're going to have uh, the three quizzes this week online. I'll give you a break like that. I think that's going to, um, everybody's going to be okay with this. So this week, no quiz. Quiz 10 is going to be next week. Okay, so let's be done with this thing and... Uh, quickly go through it. Iman, yes. So can I ask a question about unit pointers? Yeah, sure. So uh, when we try to pass a unique pointer to a function, the reason that we all, always have to use the move is that the like the copy like the copy constructor is deleted, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. Okay, thanks. Oh yeah. Oh that was a question? Yeah that so was it was more question. like a statement. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right okay. I, I wouldn't forget to the put the quiz nine back to visible oh sure 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 oh thank you you're my memory today you know what <laughs> okay uh, memory uh, advisor let's put it that way uh quizzes quiz 10 nine least condition Performance. Done. Okay, quiz nine is up. So we can do that too. All right. Now that we are done with all those things, we want to talk about pointers today. Okay. Um, um, I, I'm just going to ask a question. Mm. I do a, a, a pointer thing in IPC 144 and tell everybody what a pointer is and how, how it works and everything. Um, anybody want me to go through pointers from scratch from the beginning to tell you, well, like now we are doing smart pointers and stuff. I don't think that's anybody's issue. But just out of curiosity, would you like me to start the pointers from uh, like like IPC 144 and tell you what pointer is on and then get to the to, to today's lecture, or you want me to just start with the pointers at the current level? So the question is, would you like me to do the review from IPC 144 and then come to now? Okay, so most of you are saying like it's overwhelmingly you're saying no. So for those people who have problem and they want, they want this thing, book an appointment with me, I'll take you through it. Or you can uh, go watch IPC 144 pointer lectures if you want. Okay, so uh, so uh, let's uh, take ta talk about pointers. Um, uh, what? Um, let me do this. So. I am going to just talk about pointers and arrays. And th first, I'm going to tell you what pointers and arrays are and how they look like and what they do. And then after that, we're going to go deeper in uh, the concept of pointers. By the way, what we are talking about today is C. It has nothing to do with C++. These are all the things that we have from C language, and we just want to affirm it somehow. Um, when we talk about pointers, we we know that in 
in the computer we do not have anything called a two-dimensional array at all everything is simulated so essentially uh, and at the, the memory is a one-dimensional array of characters starting from address zero going right up to the end of the size of your uh, memory are we all okay with this okay there is no two-dimensional array anywhere if there's a two-dimensional array it's a make-believe so they did that so when you actually specify an integer by itself just a simple integer that integer occupies the size of an integer in memory whatever it is for eight whatever your platform is and when you create a pointer to an integer that pointer to an integer exactly like the other integer has a place in memory it it occupies some space but the job of that pointer is actually to hold an address so if i say some pointer uh, the pointer that I create holds the address of the variable essentially where the variable is sitting is going to uh, uh, the, 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 the address where the variable begins goes to the pointer that we have are we okay down to this point so having said that if I say target of pointer is equal a value that asterisk that represents the target right before the the name of the pointer tells to the compiler hey I don't want the variable PTR I want where the variable PTR's content is pointing to which is address 108 which is var so when you do that it actually puts the value in there okay now what happens when we create an array so from what from IPC 144 we told everybody that when you create an array of five integers those five integers are sitting back to back in memory the index starts from zero goes up to four again the memory that I've written over here is missing uh, a piece so my apologies on that I, I keep wanting to remind myself to fix that but I never did it so essentially byte number 24 is missing in here it's supposed to be here but uh, never mind so um, yeah, so the ad, the end address is wrong. The end address is supposed to be 128, but we don't care about that. So when I say integer AR5, essentially five integers back to back are a place at, at memory that that can hold five integers back to back is is uh, kind of set aside for us, and we can use it. And if I say I want AR3, essentially it means uh, the 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 element of the array with index three, which is zero one. 0, 1, 2, 3, it's the third one, therefore it's going to actually uh, be set. And uh, yeah, so if this is the case, then what really happens in memory when you say integer AR5? the reality is that AR by itself is a separate thing it is actually a constant integer pointer somewhere else so AR is a constant integer pointer somewhere and the five integers are placed in memory somewhere else and the address of the beginning of those five things are put in AR that is because that be, it's because of this when you create an integer array five like that if you say target of ar is two three five it actually sets this the first argument of the array to that one obviously you can use the the index to do the to do the same which is which means in index number two which where um, obviously everything is good but because of what we call pointer arithmetic this notation of AR2 is 444 4, 4, can be written using the value that I have a, in AR. We mentioned before uh, that at any moment of time when you add 1 to a pointer instead of 1 the size of target will be added to it. We talked about this when we reviewed pointers before smart pointers and things like that. So we know that because AR is an integer pointer if I add one to it four will be added to it because of that fact instead of writing AR2 I can write target of AR plus two which means from AR go two integers further two fours becomes uh, 
8 therefore it becomes 16 therefore this address in here becomes 116 and I say target of 116 is 555 and that's going to be uh, replaced by 555 so that's essentially the relationship between pointers and arrays are we okay with this all right so now that we know this let's actually uh, see what we can take out of this there are, it is um, uh, the fact that uh, uh, when I create um, something like uh, an array of uh, like a, like three integers like this when I create an array of three integers like this and uh, <clears throat> I'll go see out um, reinterpret cast uh, maybe if I go size T, let me see if I uh, size T and and here I'm gonna put A and I'm gonna go and uh, let me see what happens I'm gonna do this and see that still gives a warning does it? no it didn't actually that's good okay so now this is the address in which my array is sitting in okay so when I do something like that it actually shows the address of the array where the address is in my memory are we okay with this okay so if I do something like this based on what I said obviously the result of the output of this program will be exactly this is 608 this is going to be 612 which means four bytes later are we okay with this all right now now that we know this uh, let's take a look at something else so what if i create a two-dimensional array what if i create something like this So if I create a two-dimensional array, how does it work in memory? We know that when I say integer a3, I'm going to have three integers with a pointer called a pointing to the to the three. When I say over here integer b23, I know there are six integers in memory back to back, and the address inside the b. So what type of a pointer is b that I can put two indexes afterwards? How does it work? Okay. First of all, let's take a look at it and see uh, essentially how we can actually um, kind of access all the values inside B using the pointer notation. If I go C out over here, say B12, and enter it, obviously the result is going to be 600. Uh, let's put B1. B11 is. Um, let's make this 2 4. Make this one 400. 5 6 7. I just want it because if I put one one over there then I don't want the, the, the numbers to be the same so I'm gonna make this one three so if I make this one one three obviously it's gonna be 800 which is that one and if I make it one two now it's gonna be 700 it means one this is array index 0, this is array index 1, therefore that's what we see. So so essentially if I say over here C out target of B0 and target of B1, the outcome obviously is going to be uh, 100 and 500. Are we okay with this? 
Okay, if that's the case, didn't we mention that if I say C out, if I do this, if I do this, A2, A1, this is the same thing as saying target of A plus 1. And therefore, what we see now would be essentially uh, the same thing as 20. Are we good with this? So if I want to actually convert this B12, I'm going to write it over here again. If I want to convert this B12 to its pointer notation, I could do the same thing exactly as I have done to this one. So this one, when I said A1, it was target of A plus 1. So when I say B12, it is going to be target of B1 plus 2, following the suit that we did in line 10. So if I do it like this, obviously the answer is the same. Are we okay with this? Having said this, we know that B1 by itself can be converted to its pointer notation. Therefore, I can go C out target of, target of B plus 1 plus 2, which essentially will be the reinterpretation of what is B1, 2. Are we okay with this? Carrie, are we good? All right. So now that we have this, let's take a closer look of what essentially B is. I will do the exact same thing that I did for re, uh, uh, for showing the tar the the uh, where A sits, and instead I'm going to put over here B. And when I print this, let's see what happens. This is the address that B is sitting in. We we know that, but obviously that's the case. Let's see in here when I added one to A, obviously four got added because the next integer is sitting at four. But when I say over here b plus 1 what do you think will be added to b think wow i love the fact that four of you immediately answered and and the rest are going little by little forward, thinking. Um, okay, now we are going crazy. Like, <laughs> okay, so this is what we have. Okay, so we have a few 16s. We have a 32 and a 200. I have no idea where the 200 come from, came from. But if I run this program now, whoopsie daisy, cancel. Uh, you just muted yourself. I did Control F five to execute. It said that my well, many different messages came up. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna do Control F five, and as you see, we have sixty eight, we have eighty four. Okay, so when you look at the the values, you will see what is actually being added to it is exactly sixteen. So because B means next element, the next element of B is actually four integers further. So this four is actually the width of B. That's how it actually uh, simulates it. So when you when you create a, a, an array of B and uh, in, in two four, the reason it you can actually deal with it with a two-dimensional array is that every time you add one to the name of the array the whole width of the array will be added to it and it jumps to the next one and uh, that's how the two-dimensional arrays are actually simulated in C language so uh, are we okay with this oh, 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 oh. are we okay with this 
All right, fantastic. Okay, so now the uh, there are things that we need to know, which is uh, if I want to, I can write over here integer pointer p, and I can say this p is equal to address of a. Life is beautiful. Nothing's wrong with it. Oh, not address of a, the a itself. And using this, if I go see out p2, we know that it is the same thing as a, and it's going to print the the element uh, z, uh, with index 2 of array a. But how can I define a type for a, a variable that can hold p, hold b? One way, easy way is auto. <laughs> That's one of the good things that we have in C++. If it was C, you couldn't do that. But in C++, you do this. And if I do that, then Q becomes uh, a pointer of type B. And therefore, if I say Q1, uh, one, one, what the, OK. My computer is going bananas, okay? All right. So if I do something like this, it actually takes that one out. But what if I want to pass this thing as an argument to a function? Say, I want to have print and I want to put the array over here. So I want to have some type over here. And in this type, I want to have uh, the, uh, the pointer. OK? And I want to print that 2 by 4 array over there. How can I do it? OK? The answer is pointers. So if you want to create a pointer uh, to an array, if, if you wanted to pass this thing to uh, the, the function, with a two with a C syntax, you can say integer, you could say B and then put an empty thing and put over here four. And in here you're gonna say integer number of arrays, right? So that is the, the number of arrays that you can pass, which means any array with width of four will be passed to this one uh, perfectly. There's absolutely no problem. So if I have another another array over here, C that had 200 arrays, it would still work perfectly. There's absolutely no problem. This is 200, this is 2. Because B jumps to 4, the type of pointer B and C are the same. It's not the 200 that, that matters what is the width of C. It is actually the second argument that tells how wide C jumps. Are we okay with this? <laughs> This looks fine in a function, but what if I want to create manually a variable for it? I would say maybe it would be possible to do integer pointer r, and then I would say I want the width of r to be 4. Problem is that if you do something like this, then r will not be 4. It actually, you know that this star belongs to int not r so it comes over here and it becomes four arrays of four array of arrays of uh, uh, integers which is um, nothing useful to me so i want one pointer this is four pointers of integer i want one pointer that can hold an array with width of four to do that you have to bring the r that the asterisk to the R, not integer. To do that, you put it like this. So this, ladies and gentlemen, creates an array to a two-dimensional array with width of so now I can actually say R is set to B 
and R2, 2, two will be as if I am pointing at element 2, 2 of, oh, why did it go like that? Reading you mean 1, not 2, starting from 0. Yeah, but it should work anyway. Did I, did I do anything wrong in here poorly? No, this should be okay. There's no, th there's no third group. Two would mean that there's a, th the second two would mean there's a third group. There is one, two, three, four, which is Oh, yes, yes, zero. yes, you're right, you're right. It's one, two. I don't have two. I don't have, th I don't have three. I have two. You're right. One, two. Absolutely. My apologies. Anyway, so that's that. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, so uh, that's that. So that's how you pass a two-dimensional, create a pointer to a two-dimensional. And if it's a three-dimensional array, you just add the width so essentially from a square it changes to a cube so you uh, uh, pass the width and the depth so if I want to create an array to a three-dimensional array uh, so if I have something like this if I have I don't know double a mm, two three and four if I want to create a pointer to this one it's gonna be double pointer a pointer uh, pointer to a and you uh, ignore the first one and you put the three by four over here and therefore that becomes a pointer to an array of width of three and depth of four are we okay with this I think that is it. So, oh, I have two A's over here. Um, let's put this one A, B, C, D. So that's pointer to D. There we go. So that's pointers, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, pointers and arrays and all the good stuff that we need to know about them. Okay. Now there is something that called ragged arrays that I think we already covered in OP244, but I'm going to talk about it in a sec. So in here, just gonna say uh, yes, Iman. So for this one, are we also can we also use pointer to pointers? Like pointer to pointer doesn't know what is the width. Like if I if I were to create pointer a... to pointer pointer to pointer is for ragged arrays. That's don't confuse this with the OP two four four thing. I'll show you. Give me a second. Okay. 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 Let me do it like this this pointer okay this pointer can point to the question that you ask i have to draw something for it okay so this pointer that you see uh let's say this pointer you see integer r4 this one okay this pointer the pointer can point either to this A two by four because it's or it can even point to this oh uh oh you follow Iman so that yeah, pointer yeah. R can point the point to any array with width of four. Are we okay with this? Yes. A pointer to pointer is this. So this is the R thingy that we written over here. Now a pointer to pointer is for this. That's your pointer to pointer this is an array of pointers that this guy is pointing to 
and each array of pointer over here is pointing to a ragged array which is one is three oh this thing has a delay for some reason uh, I click on it it doesn't grab it oh my god undo why doesn't it one like this one like that one like this one like this and one like this so this one has three elements or four elements this one has much more this one has only two this one has three and this one has much more okay so when you are writing a code for this if the name of this array let's say it's a to actually access oh we have another one over here that i missed so let's say this one is four two okay so when i actually write something like this over here when i write over here a one two that means zero one two correct um doesn't it mean the next it, so the next one, of it? one so the next one could be the next one could be a two and say seven but if I have a one seven it's gonna crash mm -hmm. this is not a say this is not a, 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 a linear array each part of this is somewhere in memory the pointer is in address 2 the array of pointers is, is, is in address 200 and each one of this is scattered all over the heap none of this is a is is an array of with with right length and everything over here is done dynamically you follow so what like, i'm saying you follow what yeah, i'm yeah. saying yes yeah, so, so in the r so in the r that we have in the code is it correct to say that r is a pointer to a four like four element array yes that's exactly what it is not four okay. element an array with width of four not a four element okay. array it's yeah, a yeah, pointer okay. <laughs> to an array of arrays of four. Okay, okay, got it. Thanks. Got it? And let's put the seven over here. So so I, I'm, I'm satisfied with zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's got to be this one. That's here. This one is there, here. And that's actually the next thing that I wanted to teach. So you can create rag two-dimensional arrays. They look and act like two-dimensional arrays, but they are not for these type of arrays you have series of the allocations needed for this one you just allocate one and deallocate and you're done like any other dynamic memory allocation that you have but for let me just save it but now we can have something as you mentioned we can create integer pointer pointer p that is set to new <clears throat> integer pointer say four so that's essentially an array of four pointers then I'm gonna say uh, p0 is equal to new int two p1 is new int 10 p3 is new int 20 and p oh 2 and 3 is new int 4 so this is a two dimensional array so if i want to i don't know print something over here uh, if i i 
if if I want to, I can say p, I don't know, 1, uh, 3 is set to 1, 2, 3, and I can print it out. And, and it works perfectly, okay? And it works perfectly. But the problem with this is that it is not a linear thing. I cannot from P. Let me actually show something else in here. If I write integer A. Uh, professor, before you go forward there, I think you forgot to save the, the previous one. No, I did. Okay. You're scaring me, man. This is the previous one, right? Oh, okay, I was making sure, I was making okay, sure, right. my bad. So, so in here I can say E2, actually let me bring it from the other one. For this one, for example, I can do something like this, because integer B, yada, yada, yada. Now I can say integer pointer A is set to reinterpret cast of integer pointer of b is it reinterpret oh is it static cast because they are po both pointers oh no 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 it's not i didn't put braces There we go. Now in here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In here, I can say four size T I set to zero and I less than eight and I plus plus. I can go C out A I. And doing that, I'm going to print the contents of the two-dimensional array with a one-dimensional array, as you see. Because I know this is a linear thing, it looks like it's a two-dimensional array, but it has nothing to do with... Uh, uh, it, it looks like it's a two-dimensional array, but because it's linear, if I point to the beginning of those integers with a regular one-dimensional array, I can convert it to two. You can never do that to a to to b to p over here, because p has the address of the arrays of pointers, and those are scattered all over the memory. It's not a linear thing that I can go through. Does that make sense? Hopefully, to everyone. All right. So, are we okay with this? And that's it. And those are rag pointers in multidimensional arrays and pointer arithmetic and all the good stuff. So uh, go through the pointer to array thingies and come with questions the next day that we are in. Iman, go ahead. So like in here, what what is A exactly like holding? Like what address of what index is it holding? Because like I don't understand how it can, how we can access all of the elements with just like one bracket, you know? Which one? In A you're talking about? Yeah. Of course we can. See? This is, like, this is what this is what A looks like. What do you mean? This is the this is your memory. Okay? Yeah. This is your B zero and this is your B one, correct? Yeah. And this is B, correct? Yes. And because B is designed when you add one to it, it jumps over the whole thing, you can have it as a two-dimensional array, correct? Yeah. I said screw that. I'm going to put another pointer over here 
that is a single dimension and I'm going to make call that A and I'm going to mm -hmm. make that one point to the beginning of this array. Oh, okay. okay Compiler okay. has no idea for compiler. This is memory. This is 60. This is eight integers back to back. It doesn't give rats behind what's pointing at it. When I'm uh, pointing to it with a two dimensional array pointer, it's two dimensional. When I'm pointing to it with a one dimensional array, it's one dimensional because it's linear. It starts from some place at ends to the other one. Each element is sitting at the back of the other one. In here, I have it all over the memory. So there is no sequence that I can go through. Got it? Yep, thanks. All right. Any questions? One? Any questions? Two? Any questions? Three? Ladies and gents, have yourself a beautiful, beautiful day. Oh, intake, go ahead. <laughs> Don't have a beautiful Sorry, day. Sorry, I was... Still. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I was just wondering when uh, this kind of static linear array will be more useful than the uh, array of pointers. When you want, when you want speed. Ah, uh, okay. Gotcha. All right. Because this is just mathematics, right? With this, you can jump from here to here. In here, right. you have to go from one pointer to another, from one pointer to another, and then go to the address. So you have to do. But two then jumps. this would only work if the members of the array were all the same type, right? Like each element needs to be the same type. Can you create an array, ragged array with different types? No, no, no. Yeah, just double check. Yeah. No, you can. I, I wanted I... to say bravo, because cause you just made my day. What I, Instead of creating an integer pointer, you can create a void pointer. So you can create an array oh. of void pointers. And then you can hold the address of doubles in a first one, integers in a second one, characters in a fourth one, and cars in the third one. And oh. then, but you have to keep track of which array is what type. Mm. It's crazy, but you can. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's not completely nuts, but you can. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. All right, thank you. All right, okay. Any other crazy question? Any questions? One. I this is just random. I guess maybe if you were to, uh, I guess you can make an array with the this follow for, like if you can make an array of like unions, would would uh, it still follow? Because the thing is with the union, it still you know takes up the space of the largest nah, member. Unless. Um... Nah. Unions, okay. Union ha, uh, occupies the size of the biggest uh, type in it. Yeah. So you don't Big. have an array of characters. So next union is, so when you have an array of unions, maybe you can. But still you have to keep track. Yeah. But it's still you have to keep track of which array is what. And you waste lots of yeah, memory. Yes. Because that's the true, first one, the first when you create an array of unions, let's say you have a union of character, integer, and double. Yeah. Okay? When you create an array of three unions, the size is gonna be twenty three, it's twenty four. Yeah. And if you want the first one to point to a to an to an array of characters, essentially you are using only the first one. Actually, no, you're absolutely right. You can. The pointers are all same. You still have to keep track of it. So union is more civilized way. Okay. Yeah. So we right. could. So what you were saying, we could have. Uh, following Entei's thing and, and what you said, if I want three different things over here, I could have a union uh, of type, say, multiple array and put over here a, a double pointer PTR 
uh, and uh, DPTR and have integer pointer IPTR and character pointer CPTR and then create an array of unions so essentially do something like uh, multiple nev I have never done this in my life never came handy ever but the question came up so MA in here three if I create something like this uh, an array of pointers of MA no it doesn't even need to point be pointers because these are all pointers inside yeah it's a completely different thing no yeah you can do it but yeah and, and do it like this now you have three different pointers so you have an array of three different things in here now you can put the first one double in it second one integer third one character but you have to keep track of which one is what got it <laughs> yes all right okay no more crazy questions not, not today not today, not today. We'll, we'll take it easy <laughs> all right thank you everyone i'm gonna um, end the meeting before I want to call because I know somebody else is going to come ask if last chance people any questions any question one any question two all right have yourself a beautiful day I'm going to stop the recording and